All right, welcome back to ESA Summer Online. We are raising money for Alzheimer Fonden. Links to donate can be found below the stream. We would also like to thank Kaspersky, Twitch, and ViewSonic for sponsoring this event. Now it's time for Escaria running Environmental Station Alpha. Take it away. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Escheria, and I'm just joined by co-commentator Nard Anders, or Nard for short. We'll be doing this little cute little um, Metroidvania game, only showing like 20% of the actual game. So yeah, um, I'm gonna do a countdown for game. Let's let's do that in three, two, one, go. Right, okay, take it so, over hard. Yeah. yeah, I should start by saying we chose easy mode there. We allow both easy and normal, and easy just, this game is massive on damage, so it kind of uh, helps us through. Did not get the text storage at the beginning. There's a fun little glitch. It's a frame-perfect thing without a lot of cues. Um, it just lets us activate this first boss fight coming up sooner. Yeah, the thing with that text storage, I usually just, I usually just go for it. If I don't get it, it's not a big deal. Yes, we would have been able to activate this as soon as we got in the room. Just going to mash through this. This is a uh, pretty quick boss. Hard to mess it up. Right here, if you jump, yep, and she got it, but uh, didn't quite get on the platform. You can jump in a specific way and get boosted up to the second mm -hmm. block instead of having to jump on the first one. I'd have to be slightly more on the right side for that, but again, it's, it's also a somewhat minor thing. Right here, we are going down to get access to the rest of the station. Um, here, pretty soon, we're going to see a fun little glitch called text storage. If you oh, press shoot nice. and uh, menu on the same well, one frame apart, you kind of store a text box and you can use it to activate other text boxes. Ooh, first try. Nice. Mm -hmm. So you can see when we go in this room, she's going to activate it. Did not even have to walk over to the computer. Now we have access to the rest of the station. All right, so yeah, there isn't that much coming up for like a minute or so. We just go our merry way for the next upgrade, which would be double jump. And for that, we'll have to do a, a, a damage boost off a of fly. I like to call it um, the first boss of the game, the actual boss, because, yeah. I'm, sli I'm slightly nervous every time when I try to do it. I don't like to, I don't like to mess that up. There you go. Yeah, and this is a, the, the hardest damage boost in the game. There are more, but this one you have to face the right direction like that. When you uh, damage boost, you get knocked up and back. So you have to be facing backwards. That, what we just went through is a secret that kind of is a post-game thing, but we utilize it to skip a boss to get to this double jump faster. Mm -hmm. So right there, we just entered kind of th through the exit of this uh, power-up chamber. And here is double jump. I got the boots. So now we're going to go to what's really kind of the biggest sequence break of the game. It kind of lets everything else happen. Um, we're going to be getting the vertical boost or the vertical dash early. Oh boy. <laughs> Those worms can really be trolls. They, I, I think they can go between any two holes in there at any time, mm -hmm. you know, so depending on where they spawn, they can just decide to troll you. I almost ran into one. If you fall down uh, in that room, it's really difficult, if not impossible, to get out. So that would be normally a reset. And I'm like, nah. <laughs> There's another enemy down there. It's like a big bug, and it, it just harasses you endlessly. Mm hmm. Okay. Right there, we jumped under. It saves a little bit of time in falling down. Just a little optimization. Mm hmm. Now coming up here, we're going to be doing a series of damage boosts after going up this little tunnel here. 
um, they're gonna let us get to the B booster early. These damage boosts are a little different because we can double jump out of them to control which direction we go better. Like this. Got a good fish position. That so pink life fish. Is slow here. All right. Going to damage boost off with the spike. Nice. Yeah, depending on where the fish is, um, depending on how you traverse through that room, you can get over to this room really fast, or you have to wait for for one of the spikes. Okay. And that is the V booster. Now we can dash vertically, just like that. So, yeah, oh. that was a really um, good section. That pink fish, if it's in the wrong spot, it can really troll you, so good that we got it in the right spot. Now we can start doing some faster strats. When you dash, if you dash through an enemy, you do not take damage, so we utilize that uh, sometimes. Not only don't you take damage, but you also damage the enemies, which we'll be using many times throughout the run. So here we kind of have a uh, oh. All right. a long bit of walking. If there are any messages to read? Sure, I'd just like to remind you that uh, the next run is Metroid Zero Mission Any Percent Normal Blindfolded. And for that run, you can actually choose what blindfold the runner is going to wear. Right now we are, the white cat is winning at $10 with Black Penguin right behind it at five bucks you also have three more to choose from and those are brown bear standard black and white seal so if you'd like to see uh one of them uh worn by the runner during his blindfolded metroid zero mission run make sure to donate for that cause thank you so much for all of your donations so far okay and here we are in the volcanic sector you'll notice that we're taking damage now ashiria is going to go up here and get a uh, extra health tank this is just safety because some stuff coming up gets pretty scary more toward the end of the game you'll notice that we've been taking damage this whole time if you do not get that health tank um, the damage gets you quite low we're safe here though you can you can start with a somewhat low uh, health count and still get through I think 8 okay. HP is the minimum <laughs> okay Going up to our second boss fight here, the scrapping unit. We have a nice quick kill for this that utilizes the dash damage that Ashiria talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I get the good pattern for this. Yeah, so the enemy here, he can move in a fast circle or a slow circle. He shoots all these little balls and um, yeah, he's coming up really slow. This isn't great. Okay, cool. We got some damage in there. Yep, that was pretty good. Ideally, yeah, you want to. head to kind of come up a little faster, but we can't control it. Yeah, I just try to do my best to recover whenever, whenever he's not cooperating. I also like to call this boss Glados. <laughs> kind of reminds me of that. Fair. Yeah. Right here, the second stage is kind of just destroy these pillars, avoid things to the best of, uh, you know, what you get. Mm -hmm. And taking damage right. is not really important here. Like, you can just power through it. We'll get mm -hmm. a, a safe station on the way back. Yep, and right here we get the hook shot. This, uh, this basically is our movement for the rest of the game. It's faster than walking, generally. Anywhere, like, the ceiling is higher than three tiles much faster than walking. And it makes for a lot of fun movement, as you might see. Right here, this can be annoying. Trying oh, to nice. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Now we are going to be going down to get the teleport card. That's going to let us teleport around the station later. You can see that Ashiria is utilizing the uh, grappling hook anywhere possible. That's going to be the theme for the rest of the run.
Whee! <laughs> you can actually glitch the game slightly if um, if you go into liquids and out of the liquids um, pretty fast. Then if you exit the liquids, you'll have w basically water physics as your outside, and that's that's kind of hilarious, but it's not really also used anywhere. For the scarier version, you can glitch out of lava and it keeps the lava damage as well. Right here, we're going to be going in this room to the right just to pick up this teleporter. All you have to do to pick up a teleporter is uh, walk in the room where it is. Another nice thing about the uh, grappling hook here, it lets you avoid knockback, so if we grapple through damage, you don't get knocked back. Right. Heading over to the teleport card. We're going to see these rooms again. They're not going to be as friendly the second time. Oh, hey, I hit the switch. That switch is it's positioned just such that sometimes when you're shooting as you walk in the room, you don't hit it and you have to walk back. Yeah, and I, t and I tend to uh, miss it pretty frequently, so... Right here, this is kind of a mini boss guy, you just have to shoot him a million times. I'm not sure about the exact number, but it's a lot. We have the teleport I, uh, back. Yay! I can teleport around. So now we're going to be coming up and heading toward the underwater sector. Who doesn't love water levels in games? Right here, we're going to be utilizing a, uh, this room later. So now we've picked up two teleporter rooms. We will be seeing those again. That's very scary. So if you fall down into the sand, you uh, are kind of stuck in it and you have to go all the way to the edge to get out. In this area here, you can see these red blocks. Those are blocks that we cannot grapple onto. Ah, whatever. <laughs> Can't Somehow avoid that. The... Doesn't seem yeah. much. Yeah, if you shoot the upper block and you can actually jump over the diskette, but okay. I, I shot the lower one. There you go. So here's something nice. The game has a auto jump feature we can use to kind of get around really fast in places like this. You just jump super fast up through the water. Right here we're going to be using a dash reset to get up there. I'm not sure if that's an intended mechanic, but it works. You'll notice we usually get one dash. We use two there. It's fine. Usually you, uh, you don't have the B dash coming through this area, so it makes it a little easier um, in our speed run. What we picked up there was the plasma shield. You'll see it used here. It's just going to damage enemies. These little yellow jellies can get in the way, and it, it kind of helps us with that. But the main purpose is that it's going to help us with the final boss fight later. A lot of things take actually surprisingly big amounts of damage from the plasma shield. Okay. Now we're coming up here and getting the charge shot. That's going to let us break through blue blocks and it's going to deal uh, more damage. So, important thing to have. These green blocks are just toggled by these green switches when you grapple them. Just had to hit that one. In a regular playthrough, you'd hit a lot more, but you know, this is a speed run. Coming up here is the Serpent 5 skip. We have to avoid all these platforms because they are triggers for the boss fight. Now the hard part is getting out of the room without using it. Oh wow, first try. That nice. was a hook jump. You uh, push jump and hook shot one frame apart and you just kind of swing in the midair. I don't. I don't know why, but it works. It basically extends your jump length, and it's just exactly enough for uh, for getting past that. 
going to teleport back down to one of the teleporters we got and get teleport storage. We press jump, shoot, and menu, and we get that. As long as we don't shoot again, we can teleport with this anytime. If we shoot again, it goes away. Light focus mode here. Okay, going to navigate to the right teleporter. Back and right there, we stored the generator text box. So when we hit the generator, all the power in the station is going to turn on. That changes a lot of the kind of state of the station. It turns a lot of things on and blocks passages. So we're going to save it until we can get past one of those blocked passages to turn the power on. Right there are the doors that block. You see that that one shut as soon as she cleared the text box. Okay. Swing through some uh, wind fields, kill this guy, and now we're on to probably the hardest section of the game. There's a, a lot of damage coming up in these next few rooms. Normally you can you can just use a hookshot to get over to the PC slightly faster. Also my favorite part is here with the trail. Whee! <laughs> oh man. So right now we're activating four computers. They're gonna let us into this boss fight on the bottom part of this thing. We're gonna be going through this. Hmm. Once all four computers are activated, we just fall through and go to the boss fight. Right here, we've seen all this before. It's gonna look a little different, a little more uh, threatening this time. Now we have sparks falling from the ceiling and the water is electrified, so it does as much damage as lava or more. Two out of four computers. You don't need to do this text storage, but it's just for fun, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> because I can. It's sometimes help because the, um, the sparks don't fall down. So it's going to give you a bit of free movement over there, but... Right here is uh, focus mode. This is the hardest room in the game. Okay. Activating that computer, now we have to get back out and do one more room before we can save and get some health back. Oh. Not quite in the clear. Alright, this this is fine. Yeah, nine health coming out of this is, is plenty, so we're good. Mm. We're safe. <laughs> this room is just another little gauntlet. This one we're using the functionality of the dash, letting us get through things without damaging us to get through these blocks. That's all four computers activated, now we're on to the security overmind fight. Shiria is going to get teleport storage before we get into it, so we can teleport out of it faster. It's a unique, unique fight in that we don't have to attack it. It'll just destroy itself given enough time, so we can use teleport storage, even though we can't shoot. We don't even want to shoot, honestly. Yeah. With... Okay. I did that on purpose. I have a small <laughs> superstition that if you're perfectly aligned with the teleporter, it's it's gonna work. <laughs> it actually doesn't do anything, but. So here we're going to be dashing through these beams and just generally trying to avoid damage. That's uh, that's the entire fight, avoiding damage. This first section isn't so bad. It goes into a second phase where it breaks a little bit and it, it gets a lot worse. You have to start guiding uh, things onto it and we'll see that in a second. I should also mention with uh, teleport storage, if you jump while you don't have a jump available, so you've already double jumped once, then teleport storage will also go away. 
So we need to be very careful to not uh, not do that. You know, be very careful with our jumps. This is why I'm using the dash and saving my jumps for for as little as possible. Oh, wait. All right. So there. Oh, that's a nice positioning there. We have to guide the white ball back into him to destroy him. Okay. Okay, cool. Saved. Very scary when the white ball doesn't go where you want because it, it's hard to control. Looks good. So now we have to wait for this kind of explosion here, then we can teleport. If you do it before, you get cutscene storage, which is the bad kind of storage. It blocks you from doing anything. Yep. Usually when the screen goes white, it's uh, in the clear. So now we are entering the final boss. First, we have to hook shot through these one-way platforms. I think that's the only time we use it, but it's kind of a cool trick. Dash down through that wind field, activate these four things, and we are on to the final boss. There's kind of three, four stages, maybe. The first is this shell unit, the red guy in the top right. The second is the one behind you. And then the third and fourth we'll see later. Hit him with the charge shot and see in a sec. Yeah, perfect. Just try to get as much damage in as possible. And then you'll see here, we stand really close to him, so our plasma shield's hitting him as well. It just speeds up the fight a little bit. Now this guy, remember the extra dash damage? We get to use it again here. Gonna lead it over to this platform and eventually it gets angry and starts moving downward and dash down. Nice. Massive damage. Now we're on to the second phase. We're fighting the virus itself. First, we have to get rid of its two hands and then we have to damage the head. These hands can be kind of uh, mean sometimes. Sometimes they do their cycles a little bit faster. You have to dash around their damage. It's it's a tough fight. Perfect hands phase. Now we're going to do the quick kill. Perfect. So we need to get two or three charge shots off at least and bounce off his shield. One HP off. But that was really good. Ah. Very good fight. Okay. Now we're just waiting for the last text box, and it is GG. Yeah, as soon as the final text box is um, clicked away, that's when the time is done. Time. Oh, man, okay. that was a great run. Yeah, not too bad. Um, Could have... Could have gone worse, could have been better, but I want to say for a marathon run, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's a big shout out to Hampoli for making this awesome game. You haven't even seen like most of it, so be sure to check it out if you're interested in Metroidvanias. Shoutouts to the ESA community, Environmental Station Alpha. Yeah, um, a lot of a lot of great people there. Thank you, Nard, for commentating. It's a pleasure. Yeah, it was an awesome run. Twenty-two mm -hmm. thirty-one, amazing marathon time. All right, and I guess I guess that's it for ESA at ESA. I had to do it.